the day's about winding down. And I got to come out here and harvest some eggplants. But in doing that, I'm noticing that we have a lot of roly polies in the bed. Now, the question is asked, is that a friend or a foe? I call them a friend. These are my eggplants here. In the middle there, I got some dark opal basil eggplants. I want you to pay attention to the damage that's on the plant. Any damage that you're going to see are from the Japanese beetle. But you don't see any roly polies on the plants. Let me show you where the roly polies are. That's where the roly polies are. I feed the roly polies. I'm going to take you around here and let you see some other leaves that the roly polies are taking care of. Peel bugs, whatever you want to call them. They're everywhere, but they're not on my plants. We have some Japanese beetle damage. Got eggplants down there. Got a huge eggplant right there we gotta harvest. And once again, there you roly polies. I use this to my advantage down here also. This is roly poly damage. I'm gonna go back around here and I'm gonna show you what I do to keep the roly polies off my plants. You see leaves like this? It's not getting any sunshine. We're gonna just go ahead and remove that. This is what we have here. And all I do, I just go down, just drop it in the bed for them. You want to keep the roly polies off your plants, give them something to feed off of. What the roly polies are, or the peel bugs, or whatever you want to call them, that's nature's composter. That's one of the best composters you're going to have in your garden. Back over here, you see like stuff like this. We're going to remove this off the plant because the plant's going to keep trying to put energy into this as opposed to this and that. So this is going to be taking energy away. What do we want to do? Just cut it off. We don't want to leave it laying on the plant. We just bring it down here, drop it down there on the bed, and that becomes food. And a couple of days later, it'll look like this. And that's probably about three days old. That's how fast they'll devour these leaves. Let's see if I can find another one. Same thing over here. See that right there? You gotta feed them. That's how you keep them off your plants. You give them what they want. They're gonna recycle those nutrients and those nutrients are going right back into the soil. The biggest thing is just coexisting. So whether you call them roly polies, peel bugs, uh, doodle bugs, roly polies are wood lice, but not all wood lice are roly polies. We have the cousin of the roly poly and they're known as a sow bug. Now the sow bugs do not roll in the ball as the roly poly do and that's the difference between them. Roly polies are crustaceans, which they're not even insects. They're closely related to things like shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. Armadillidium vulgari. In the UK, they may call them slaters. And when they poop, they release those nutrients back into the soil into rich, dark hummus. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to this other bed with my brassicas. So for those who say the roly polies are destroying their seedlings, that's because you're not managing them. Brassica seedlings all over this bed and they're not being touched. What do you see right there going across? You can tell where they've been feeding. You can also see more of the roly polies here. So how is it that we can have roly polies all throughout this bed, yet they're not bothering the seedlings? That's because they have options. These brassicas are self-seeded. Roly-polies are detritivores, which means they feed mainly on decaying organic matter. And you're not giving them what they're looking for. Yes, they will eat your seedlings. So this is one of the things that we're talking about. You wanna manage the roly-polies. We're in July, the middle of the summer, and these are my brassicas. And when you look down here at the bottom, no matter where I show you throughout this bed, you're gonna see roly-polies. Roly polies are detritivores, which means they feed mainly on decaying organic matter. And all of this is part of the maintenance that I do with my garden. I allow it to transition on its own. And what I call this is just best practices on how I tend to my garden. 
I listen, I watch, and I pay attention. So what I like to do is use an apple. Now this is a peach here, and um, I've never used a peach before, but I didn't have any, but I wanted to give you an example of how you wanna manage them. And you can remove them from your garden bed and relocate them to different areas in your garden. So what you would do is basically take your apple, split it in half, ream it out, and then make you like a little opening for them. And what they'll do is they'll go inside of here and they'll leach onto this as they're eating on it. And because it's on that leaf, you just pick the leaf up and you may take it and relocate them to another part of your garden and just remove the fruit. The benefits are gonna far outweigh any negatives that you're gonna have around your garden. That is with correct management. Correct management is the key to anything that you're doing around the garden because too much of anything isn't good for you. Anything in excess is gonna be too much. That includes the foods that we eat. You can eat good food, but too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Everything is within moderation. Whether you're doing foods, whether you're doing gardening, whether you're doing your soil preps, everything is within moderation and management is the key. Your garden will speak to you if you just listen. An overpopulation of the peel bugs or the roly polies could mean you have excessive moisture in your garden. That's a you problem. That's not a roly poly problem. Paying attention to your garden, the roly polies can be one of your best friends. Soil fertility, soil structure, these are some of the things that the roly poly brings as they create this rich, nutrient dense hummus in your garden. They're going to tell you so much about the health in the soil that you're growing your plants in. They can remove heavy metals from your garden, things like lead, arsenic, all of these things the roly poly can do for you. Management is the key. The digestive system houses microbes that are crucial to breaking down that organic matter. The roly polies can live up to two years, and when they pass away, they leave behind chitin in the soil, and chitin is a superfood for the microbes. As your plants uptake the chitin, it boosts their immune system, giving them stronger, healthier cell walls. So if you have an overabundance of roly polies in your garden, that's a you problem, that's not a roly polies problem. Their job is primarily to remove any decaying or dying or sick plants that are in your garden. Seedlings are under attack, why? because they're one of the weakest things in your garden. So instead of trying to get rid of the roly polies, why not just pay attention to what they're trying to tell you? A healthy garden ecosystem should have roly polies in it. That's a part of the cleanup crew. So the next time you see roly polies doing their job in the garden, put some respect on that name, growing out the box. Still got some play. Still got that shiny coating on it. This baby is good to go.